Rebuilding a Stuart 10V steam engine, part 4. Cleaning and reshaping the cylinder castings and recutting the threads in the bottom part using a 6BA tap. I didn't make a video yesterday. Sadly, I was at the funeral of a friend of mine. This is John Lambert, a wonderful person and a great character actor. Here he is in a Harry Potter show at the National Railway Museum, playing the part of Dumbledore. I have it. What does it say, Professor? It says Harry Potter is ready to do his exam examination. One sad fact of life is inevitable. As you get older, your friends start to die, and one day it will be my turn. I quite look forward to that. I'll probably make a video about it before I go. On to some slightly happier things now. Here's the flywheel from the engine, and here are four slide valves. I've just bought these from Stuart Models. They are no longer cast, instead the machine from brass, and it's possibly a better idea. I've seen a lot of number 10 steam engines where the valves just weren't right, but now they are fully machined to the correct dimensions and available from Stuart Models, there's no excuse for a wheezy steam engine. I'll be fitting a couple of these to the engine that I'm rebuilding, and we shall see whether it improves the performance. I have a plastic box with a double 10 V steam engine in it that belongs to a customer and it's not worth repairing. In the bottom of this box I found a slide valve, here it is, and I'm going to compare this slide valve against one of the new ones. And as you can clearly see, the new valve is considerably different to the old cast type, it's even a different size. I like to keep a good stock of 7BA studs for Stuart steam engines because I work on them a lot of the time. So I bought a pack of 25 studs. I asked Andy at Stuart Models about the availability of gaskets for number 10 steam engines. And Andy said they did the ones for the steam chests, but they only have the ones for the cylinders with 5 holes in them. Not the 6 bolt type like on this steam engine. Andy kindly sent me these 4 free of charge and I'm very grateful for this. It will save making them. Here are the cylinders, and they're in a bit of a state, really. They've been butchered with the file to accommodate the oversized exhaust flanges. They're not so bad that I need to make some new ones. I can modify these. This is what they look like now. I reprofiled the cylinders using my one-inch belt sander, which was quite easy to do. They are a slightly different shape to what they should be. There's more of an angle from the round part to the flat part of the steam chest port. But I would think they'll be okay. If they aren't, I will make some new cylinders. On the bench, I'm using this piece of steel plate to provide a flat surface to hold the sandpaper because I'm going to clean up the port faces of the cylinders. But before I clean up the port face using this piece of emery cloth, I'm going to clean off every trace of the silicone rubber that held the cylinder covers in place. If I remember rightly, this piece of emery cloth is 135 grit or something like that. Not too coarse and not too smooth. The cylinders are definitely starting to look better. The next part of the job is to clean up the port faces because they are quite badly marked. For this job I've wrapped the emery cloth around the piece of steel just to hold it in place because this is going to take a while. I could have machined the port faces but they're not really bad enough to warrant that. And besides this is a less risky process. I applied some oil to the piece of emery cloth just to make it cut better, and I didn't use enough oil so I applied some more. This job makes a bit of a scratching noise and I would normally leave the audio on, but unfortunately at the moment I'm using my tumbler polisher to clean up some parts for this engine, so it's just a loud rattling noise and it's driving me nuts. So I'm sparing you that by muting the audio. Another good reason to use oil is because you can see how much metal you're removing by the state of the residue. The more metal you remove, the darker the residue, and here's the story so far. It's looking a bit scratched, but it really doesn't matter, because after all the rough cleaning up, I'll be using some 400 grade wet and dry sandpaper to get a better finish. Because the slide valve goes up and down in the steam chest, I'm actually doing the sanding transversely. All except for this clip, which was the very last part of the job. I don't want any grit and metal residue left in the ports or any of the bolt holes, so here, using my airline, I'm cleaning everything away. You don't really want particles of metal and sand left inside, but it's not quite as critical where a steam engine is concerned. 
because when the steam engine runs, the first steam that hits the cylinder turns to water. So if you have any metal particles or residue, it's washed away immediately by the water, which is very different to the way an internal combustion engine works. All the parts need to be very clean. I pulled a rag through both of the cylinder bores so I could have a close look at them. One of the cylinder bores felt very good, nice and shiny. To give the cylinder bore a good clean, I used a three quarters of an inch diameter reamer. And as you can see, it's a perfect fit in the cylinder bore. But on the other cylinder, it was quite tight. And the reason for this is nothing to do with the machining. The reamer was only tight in the second cylinder because it was removing the coating of rust that had formed on the inside of the cylinder. The reamer cleaned away all the rust and the second cylinder is now fine again. The final part of the job in this video is to re-thread the holes in the cylinders underneath. These four holes were originally all threaded 7BA, but someone had re-threaded a couple of the holes with a metric tap. The good thing is, metric threads and BA threads are quite similar, so all I had to do was re-thread every one of the holes using a 6BA tap. And I didn't have to drill out any of the holes tapping size. The existing holes with the 7BA threads were perfect to be re-threaded 6BA. Here I'm just checking that a 6BA bolt fits through the holes in the top of the standards, which it does. I'll wait and see when I come to refit the cylinders whether these holes are going to be fine or whether they need enlarging. The cylinders are now looking much better than they did at the beginning of the video. That's it for this one. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.